The question given here is a 25 year old patient reports to OPD with a complaint of rapid elevation of the left upper eyelid during movement of the mandible to the contralateral side as shown in the figure. What is the most probable diagnosis? The clinical picture of the patient is given to us where we can observe that as the patient tries to move her mandible towards right side, there is elevation of the left upper eyelid that is seen in this patient. Therefore, the right side is mentioned as contralateral in the question and left side stands for ipsilateral. Therefore, contralateral movement of the mandible is bringing about elevation of the upper eyelid on the ipsilateral side. So, here we have to notice that this particular presentation or this peculiar presentation is because of some connection that exists between both the group of muscles that brings about this action. So, it is due to the aberrant connection between the nerves supplying the muscles which bring about the lateral movement of the mandible and the nerves that supply the upper eyelid. So, in this patient it is the mandibular nerve that is involved because it is going to supply the muscles of mastication of which the pterygoid muscle is going to bring about such lateral movement. Therefore, mandibular nerve supplies the lateral pterygoid muscle which in turn is a branch of fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve. And when it comes to the upper eyelid, the elevation of upper eyelid is seen here. So, elevation is brought about by levator palpebrae superioris muscle which is supplied by third cranial nerve. Therefore, there is some aberrant connection between the fifth cranial nerve that is a mandibular nerve with the ocular motor nerve in this patient. So, with this basic knowledge, now let us look into the various options given to us. They are auriculotemporal syndrome, marin amet syndrome, eagle syndrome and trigeminal ocular motor synkinesis. Let us go through the options one by one based on the clinical picture. Let us conclude with the most probable diagnosis. In case of auriculotemporal syndrome, there is damage to the auriculotemporal nerve. It is also known as phrase syndrome or gustatory sweating. So, in this syndrome, the clinical presentation is there is profuse sweating seen in the skin region of the parotid gland. On, on eating, especially on eating, there is profuse sweating that is seen in the patient affected with auriculotemporal syndrome. Therefore, this presentation does not match with the given clinical presentation. Therefore, you can omit auriculotemporal syndrome from the option. Next comes Marin Amet syndrome. In Marin Amet syndrome, it is a kind of synkinesis. Here, the most characteristic clinical presentation is that there is spontaneous closure of the eye on mouth opening or on jaw opening. As the patient opens the jaw, there is spontaneous involuntary closure of eye that is seen. So, this presentation is because of the aberrant facial nerve regeneration. Facial nerve is getting involved in this Marin Amet syndrome and this is seen in patients with facial paralysis or the patients who have recovered from facial paralysis. The most characteristic presentation is closure of the eye, spontaneous or involuntary closure of the eye on jaw opening. Therefore, this is not matching with the clinical presentation of our case. Therefore, we can omit this. And the third condition is Eagle syndrome. Eagle syndrome is caused by elongation of the styloid process or there is ossification of the stylohyoid ligament. So, here you can see that the styloid process elongates or the stylohyoid ligament ossifies which is going to compress on the adjacent important vessels that is internal or external carotid artery and it brings about the most common syndrome or the presentation as pharyngeal pain. You will have pharyngeal pain associated with dysphagia and ear pain that is otalgia. So, the patient mainly presents with these symptoms and it is because of the elongated styloid process. It can occur either bilaterally also unilaterally. So, therefore, the clinical presentation or the symptoms of Eagle syndrome also does not match with our case. Therefore, the presentation is not Eagle syndrome. So, you can omit the options and the only option that is left here is trigemino ocular motor synkinesis. So, here as the name itself indicates that there is trigeminal involvement and ocular motor involvement, fifth cranial nerve and third cranial nerve that is involved and there is some synkinesis that exists between both the nerves. And this trigemino ocular motor synkinesis is also known as Marcus Gunn jaw winking syndrome. 
Marcus Gunn jaw winking syndrome and here we have to know that the patients with this syndrome have congenital tosses of the eye and whenever the patient makes any movement of the jaws especially mandible you can observe that there occurs winking effect that is the elevation of the upper eyelid that is evident in this patient so therefore trigemino ocular motor synkinesis otherwise known as marcus gun jaw winking syndrome is the most probable diagnosis that favors to the clinical presentation of our case therefore the right answer here is trigemino ocular motor synkinesis. So, getting on to the explanation, we have to note that the patient will have congenital unilateral tosses and there is rapid elevation of that tautic eyelid on movement of the mandible to the contralateral side and it is because of some aberrant connection between the trigeminal nerve that is going to supply the external pterygoid muscle which is bring which brings about the lateral movement of the mandible with the superior division of the ocular motor nerve that is the third cranial nerve that is going to innervate the levator palpebrae superioris muscle that is going to elevate the upper eyelids because of this aberrant connection we get this jaw winking syndrome and it was uh, named after robert marcus gunn because of which it is called as Marcus Gunn jaw winking syndrome. And another point is that Marin Amet syndrome, it is also known as inverted Marcus Gunn phenomenon. As I have mentioned, in this syndrome, there is eye closure automatically when the patient opens the jaw forcefully and fully. So therefore, Marin Amet syndrome involves facial nerve. It is also known as inverted Marcus Gunn phenomenon. So therefore, based on the clinical findings, as given in the clinical picture, the most probable diagnosis of the case is Marcus Gunn jaw winking syndrome or trigemino ocular motor synkinesis.